This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to continue the work on my focus stacking rig. In my previous video, which you can check there at the corner, uh, I started to work on this project and then uh, I have built a rig uh, together with this uh, PCB. And I showed you that uh, I can use my system to make a good and sharp uh, macro uh, photos uh, using this uh, focus stacking rig. And just to quickly summarize the things is that uh, we need this focus stacking rig in order to be able to compensate for the shallow depth of field uh, when we are trying to uh, take a macro photo. Because if you take a macro uh, photo of a subject, then you will notice that the depth of field is quite shallow. I show a sample image here. And uh, to overcome this issue, uh, we move the camera or the subject across uh, the wall area that we want to uh, keep sharp step by step uh, where the step size is basically the width or less than the width of the sharp uh, region on your subject and then we blend these images together towards the end of the video I will show you how to do this in Photoshop uh, using my pictures that I take in this video and uh, yeah so when we merge these pictures together we get a sharp image uh, which is sharp across the wall frame the wall frame of the picture. So then that's why we need this uh, thing. And now as you can see I have a new rig. I will show you the old rig soon uh, because this new rig is based on some suggestions that I got from other uh, people and also by my own ideas that I anyway wanted to build a rig so I designed this thing. And you can see that uh, several parts here are 3D printed and then I also have some off-the-shelf uh, parts. So I will guide you through this thing and I designed this stuff in a way that it is uh, relatively easy to uh, manufacture it. So hopefully you can replicate this if you want. I will make these 3D files available for free on my website. And uh, before uh, progressing forward in the video, I just want to uh, have a shout out or something like that for some bloggers or uh, authors because I have noticed uh, two big spikes in the number of viewers uh, on my previous video on this uh, focus stacking rig and the first occasion was when my uh, project was reposted on the official Arduino's blog and Facebook page so whoever posted it thank you and then also a few days or a week after that I noticed another peak uh, in the number of viewers on that video and then I have uh, realized that my video got posted on Hackaday's blog so again, uh, thank you very much, uh, whoever posted this uh, project on, on that site. I hope everyone uh, enjoys uh, this kind of things. So then, uh, coming back to this uh, rig, uh, let's uh, see what are the main uh, features of this thing. So I start with the mechanism first. So as you can see, uh, we have a NEMA 17 stepper motor. This is a 200 steps per turn stepper motor. But if you can, uh, it's even better to use uh, 400 steps per turn uh, motor. I mean, you can always divide the steps uh, using micro stepping, but if your motor by default can do 400 steps per turn, that just leads to a better, uh, let's say, stability. And then we have this uh, mounting bracket, uh, which I designed for uh, a NEMA 17 motor, but uh, it's very easy to design a new one for NEMA 23, but it's not necessary because you don't need that much torque here. And then here is a flexible coupler, and then this thing and this thing, they are the same. So they are just rotated by 180 degrees, so I just had to design one. And what we have is that this holds uh, the bearing here, uh, which is a, uh, yeah, a normal bearing that you can buy uh, wherever you want to buy it from uh, Amazon, AliExpress, eBay and so on and then we have uh, two 8mm uh, guiding rails and then in the center we have a lead screw which has 1mm uh, pitch which means that when I turn one full rotation here then the linear displacement along the horizontal axis will be 1mm so if I use a 200 steps per turn motor uh, that will mean that uh, one step on the motor or one step uh, or one uh, 
angular displacement caused by one step on the motor will uh, cause five micrometers uh, step uh, along the horizontal axis. And then, for example, if I divide this uh, number of steps uh, using microstepping, and let's say I jump down to 1,600 steps per turn, then the theoretical step size is 625 nanometers. So theoretically, this can be very precise. But of course, it's made of plastic and uh, issues with compliance are there and so on. So of course, it uh, cannot do it consistently, but uh, theoretically, we can do it. So then uh, we have these two holders and they are fixed to the profile under it, which is the main uh, mounting plate, by four screws. So two screws, uh, can be put in these holes and then we can use those small uh, V or T nuts for these uh, slots in the profile and then of course you can see that uh, they are also mounted by their uh, at their side so they hold uh, quite nicely into this uh, profile and then uh, in the center uh, you can see that on the top I have this uh, quick release uh, mounting plate so it's very easy to uh, mount any camera on it and uh, then we have the cross head, uh, you can see it from this side and I show it from this side because you can see one of the main components on the two sides, so these gratings are actually these uh, dry lin uh, linear bearings, you can see, so it's just a simple piece of plastic with uh, small friction and uh, that slides over this uh, linear guide. And then inside here I actually, uh, I can show it, I have this uh, screw, so this is the lead screw and I have this uh, spring-loaded uh, anti-backlash nut. Here it's uh, not assembled correctly, as you might have noticed, uh, because this is just uh, straight out of the package that I received. Uh, but this is inside the crosshead, so we account for the backlash a little bit at least. It's not perfect, but it works uh, to some extent. And of course, at the bottom, uh, I picked this because it's easy to buy off the shelf. It's a 25 uh, centimeter long, uh, 20 by 80, uh, extrusion profile. It's an aluminium profile, it's very easy to buy it anywhere, uh, cheaply available, and it's a solid, rigid, stiff uh, thing. So it's a very good uh, mounting surface. So yeah, that's what we have. And just to put it in perspective, uh, this was the previous uh, stuff. So this is a linear guide, uh, which you can also buy off the shelf, so you don't need to bother with this uh, printing and stuff, but I trust this uh, better than this, because for example, Despite the fact that this is a stiffer thing uh, due to its construction, uh, the pitch of this is uh, five uh, millimeters. So when you turn the axis, uh, the lead screw here by one turn, uh, the linear displacement will be yeah, half a centimeter instead of uh, one millimeters. So uh, yeah, when this moves uh, one step, then it, one step will be five times higher or five times longer than on this guy. And also the thing why I uh, designed this, uh, this way, uh, was due to some discussion with my friend uh, Alan Walsh, who has a YouTube channel and he is a very good expert on macro photography, so please check his videos and uh, check his channel and also his website. Uh, he immediately pointed out that uh, this ball head is not really a good idea for several reasons. And of course, uh, if you notice, there is a large distance between the moving axis, the carriage here, and where you mount the camera. And that is bad because uh, then there is a lot of inertia far away from the axis. So that can cause vibrations and stuff. So that's not so good. And also, uh, which is very obvious, that uh, I should not use uh, this uh, ball head in a tilted way. Because whenever you move the carriage, uh, the normal vector of your CCD, so let's say my palm is the CCD and the normal vector is just the vector perpendicular to the surface, that should be parallel uh, with the movement. And here it's not parallel because if I mount the camera this way and uh, the camera is standing like this and I move forward, uh, the, the normal vector is pointing downwards or the lens for that matter is pointing downwards. So whenever I move uh, back and forth uh, uh, as compared to my subject which is somewhere here on the left side uh, there is some kind of breathing effect so it's not only that I move the focus area but I also move the frame uh, 
across the surface of the specimen. So that's not good because the stacking will not be successful. So everything should be very parallel to each other. So therefore this construction is not so good because uh, first of all, if you use it like this, uh, it won't work perfectly, but also it's very hard to align this stuff uh, parallel. So then uh, here, I show it from side view. The camera just uh, sits here on top of the crosshead, which is very close to the axis. So there is very little uh, vibrations, hopefully. And then everything moves just really along one axis uh, in a preferable uh, way. So yeah, that's something. And then we arrive to the electronics and we also arrived to the sponsor of this video, uh, PCB way. So they made this very nice uh, PCB. And uh, if you are interested in getting this PCB, please go to my project page on PCB Waste website and then uh, you can buy it from them, either just the PCB or the whole assembled thing because I have uploaded my uh, bill of materials to my project page so you can also get the parts. And also, it's not only that they can provide you uh, this PCB or other PCBs that you design, but they also have 3D printing services and it's very relevant for this video because I will release all my uh, 3D printing uh, files. So you can, if you don't have a 3D printer, you can head over to PCBWay's website, select their 3D printing related options and then you can uh, upload my files, select the material, I use PLA and then just uh, place an order and uh, they have very good quality 3D printing so you will be very satisfied how this comes out. So regarding the PCB, I haven't done uh, any redesign. Uh, what is mainly done here is that I further improved the software. I made some new options uh, in, in the software. I will show it to you. And I added this infrared LED. It's at the same port where I used uh, the old uh, solution, which is this remote controller. But the problem with this remote controller is that it limits us uh, by the wires, first of all, but it also limits us to the camera that I used, uh, the Sony A6000. So I just uh, disassembled one of these guys and I got the wires out and uh, then the PCB accepts it at this terminal. And yeah, I can just use it to release the shutter of my camera. But now uh, I can trigger this infrared LED. So if you know the code of your camera, uh, which should be sent to it by yeah, these kind of remote controllers, then that can be programmed into my uh, code. And then you can release any cameras using infrared uh, LEDs. So that's uh, quite a good uh, stuff, I think, because then it just increases the compatibility of my system with other cameras. So now we saw each component of this system, both the mechanisms and uh, the electronics. So what I'm going to do now is I turn on this thing and I explain you the menu uh, built uh, on this thing. And then uh, I will uh, take a few pictures. And uh, what I'm going to do, I first uh, show you my optical system just to give you a bit better impression. So now I have this guy here. So on this side, I have a Sony mount on this side, which converts uh, into a M42 mount because this bellow has M42 uh, thread. And on the other side, I have this uh, M42 uh, converter to this uh, microscope uh, thread. And then I have a microscope lens uh, here. So then I'm using this uh, to take pictures. And unfortunately, uh, this uh, mounting plate moves together with the bellow. I can show it to you how. Uh, which means that when I mount this on the rail here, I show it from the side views then yeah you get the point that uh, the center of the weight is at my left hand so this will ca kind of sag a little bit uh, probably but uh, we will see how this works out but uh, ideally i would put the lens this guy in a way that uh, the center of the weight should be over the crosshead and not behind it like now but yeah what whatever yeah that's uh, I might buy a different uh, plate in the future, but for you, if you can pick another, uh, let's say, weight distribution, then uh, do it like that. So you try to put the center of the weight over the crosshead and not behind it like 
it will be in my case, unfortunately. But yeah, this is my system. So we will see what we can uh, bring out uh, from this. And uh, I will also mount, uh, I don't have flashes. So I have this ring light and it perfectly goes around uh, the microscope lens, something like this. I just have to tighten the screws and then I will pick some subject to demonstrate this thing. But first, uh, let's look at the screen and uh, let's see yeah, what this uh, software can do for you. So now we are looking at the display. So let me turn on the uh, system. So I power it up. And now you can see that we ended up on a display, which is asking if we want to perform uh, homing. So how this works is that you have to place uh, the uh, limit switch somewhere in between your crosshead and the motor. And then when you press yes, so the green button, obviously, then uh, yeah, the system will drive your crosshead until the limit switch is hit. Then the limit switch uh, stops the system and then uh, the motor will start moving in the other direction until the limit switch is released. And then that point will be considered as the origin of your system. But we press no right now. And now we entered uh, this display, which uh, shows all the fancy details. So let me guide you through all of these things. So at the top left uh, corner, uh, right here, we have the F number, so the aperture. You can change that and uh, that will influence the depth of field. So whenever we change this value by entering this menu, then uh, when I exit the menu, you can see that the depth of field is recalculated. And uh, the depth of field also depends on the magnification, which is the next uh, menu here. So that can be either calculated if you know your system or if you use just a simple macro lens, then it's written on the lens itself. So then you can enter this. And if I don't bump into the display, I can even show you what happens. So yeah, you can see that it can be changed. So now I change it to something random. And then you can see that this fourth item STP, which is just simply the step size, uh, immediately changes. So upon changing the aperture and the magnification, we calculate the depth of field. And then based on that, uh, I use an arbitrary a constant which I use to multiply or divide uh, the depth of field and that will give you uh, let's say recommended step size but you can change it so if you move to this part and enter and change it you can manually uh, yeah reconsider the amount that you want to move by one step so now this is defined in millimeters so we are moving half a millimeter or 500 micrometers by one step and between each of these uh, 500 uh, micrometers uh, step, uh, the camera will take a picture when you do the focus stacking. Uh, then we have the finish point, if I would find that uh, right now. So that is the farthest uh, point on your image. So you have to move, let's say, towards the back of the image. I will show you uh, through the perspective of this camera, which is recording the display right now. Uh, how that works, but first you have to move there. Uh, so you define the finish point uh, like physically. So you are looking through your viewfinder or uh, the live view. So you look at your display of the camera and then uh, you move the carriage when you, when you enter this and uh, press the buttons, for example, you will hear it. You move the carriage until you go to the far point of your uh, subject and then you save this point and then you now move backwards uh, to, to your uh, start point so now you try to move the move the object or move the camera depending on what you mount on this uh, rig uh, you move your camera to the point where you have focus on the closest point to the lens so this will move like that and then you can move this in whatever directions and then just accept the values. So then uh, what I suggest here before moving to the uh, next point is whenever you pick uh, the finish point, 
you go a bit over your point. I will show you how that works. And whenever you start uh, check your start point, you go again, you overshoot it a little bit uh, because there is a backlash in the system, of, of course. So you account for it by taking some extra pictures before starting to focus on the closest point uh, to the lens. And then you keep taking pictures after you passed uh, the farthest uh, point on your uh, subject just to be safe. So after uh, entering these two values, you could see that the travel distance got uh, calculated, but the number of steps remain zero. And that is because we choose a very high step size, very large step size value. So uh, then if you divide the travel distance by the step size, of course, you get zero. So I just show you that this thing actually works. If I choose something uh, reasonably small, then uh, whenever I change the step size, of course, everything gets recalculated. So now you see that we have uh, 40 microns here. And if you divide 185 microns by 40, then you get four because it's uh, integers. Uh, so you get four, four steps here. And then the progress is updated when you uh, actually start uh, the system. So this is just the number of steps in progress. So you see here that you should be able to move four steps. And here you will see that oh, you did one step, two step, uh, two steps, uh, three steps and so on. And then the next here is the go. So if I select it, if I press the right button, uh, then uh, the system will perform the stepping and you have to press the left button long so it will quit it. So you can interrupt it if you change your mind. And then the homing is very obvious. So when you uh, click it and uh, you select it, so now the selection is green. And if you press the right button, then uh, homing will be performed. So then uh, the system will run back to your limit switch. And then here is the next. So we check what is on the next page. And uh, you can see that we have uh, three parameters that we can change. One is the micro step. So of course you can change the micro step on your stepper motor driver because I put uh, jumper pins on the PCB. But uh, in the previous version of the software, you had to uh, redefine the micro step uh, by recompiling the pro program. So here I just made it possible that you can uh, change the steps uh, between 200 and uh, 6400. And these are the typical micro stepping values for the uh, stepper motor driver that I'm using here. And of course, if you use a different uh, construction that I use in this video, which has one millimeter pitch, you can change that also. So yeah, feel free to play with this. And uh, based on the micro step uh, value and the pitch length, uh, the step length in micrometers automatically gets recalculated. So with this crazy amount of micro stepping and this with small uh, uh, pitch value, uh, we get 310 nanometers as step size. So yeah. And then the dwell time, uh, this has to be t uh, yeah, taken seriously. This is important. So the dwell time is the waiting time uh, between two pictures, but in the code, I will show you how it works. It's divided into two parts. So uh, you should consider this as two times 1.5 seconds. And how it works is that there is one delay after I sent out the signal by this uh, infrared uh, LED. So when this infrared LED sends out the signal to the camera, the camera, of course, needs time to uh, release the shutter and so on. So there is half of the dwell time after uh, I sent out the infrared uh, pulse. And then after that time uh, elapsed, uh, the camera is being moved by the carriage, by the rig. And after the rig finished the movement, we wait another half of the dwell time uh, time. So in this case, half, uh, one and a half a second. And that is to let the vibrations uh, settle. So the wall rig becomes uh, yeah, stable again or solid again. And then we take another picture. Uh, and then after sending out the signal, we wait one and a half a seconds. And then uh, we move the carriage, another one and a half a seconds uh, waiting time and so on. And this goes on and on 
until you finished uh, taking uh, enough pictures, which you defined by the step size and uh, the other parameters on this uh, screen. So now what I will do is that I mount uh, the macro system on my camera, which is now recording this uh, display. And then first I will show you how this uh, finish point and start point should look like. And then uh, I will take a picture of some subject. I will try to find something interesting and we will see how that looks. And uh, I will show you also how you can put together these uh, yeah, separate pictures into one sharp, hopefully sharp uh, picture in Photoshop. So let me prepare the camera and then we continue. So as I said, first I want to show you how this finish point and start point uh, works in my uh, code. So now we have a subject and uh, we are focusing at the bottom of it, as you can see. And you can also see that it is shaking because I'm leaning against uh, the table. But uh, now how the finish point should work is that we should move to the, yeah, the farthest point of this uh, thing, which looks something like this. And then we should uh, go over it a little bit uh, to have some extra pictures to yeah, account for backlash and other imperfections. It's easier to take 5, 10, 20 more pictures than uh, doing the stacking all over again. So let's say this should be the finish point. So then I save this and then I move backwards. to the close point. So I see that now the bottom of the picture is uh, sharp. So now I move some extra steps uh, just to get it out of focus. So I overshoot it, something like this. So the stack would uh, start from here. So then, uh, yeah, the camera would move between these two points. So now it would move backwards. So towards this direction, which I show now. And then it would move, would take a picture. It would move again, would take a picture. Again, take a picture. And it would continue this until we reach the end of the subject. So this was just for a demonstration. So I will try to align my subject a bit better. And uh, then I will uh, take a picture uh, or take several pictures of the subject and uh, try to get something good out of this. Yeah, so here we look at Photoshop right now and I'm going to show you how to process the images which uh, we have just uh, taken. So you are at the main screen and then you can open the file. And then here you have to go to scripts. And then under the scripts you have this load files into stack. So you just click on that and then you get this window where you can browse for your uh, stack images. So you click on browse and then I have my images. So I just start to load them in. So I just select them. So this will be the first one. And the last one is uh, somewhere here, or maybe even a bit back. So I just select all and then I press OK. So now we can see all images in the list. So I select attempt to automatically align source images. And then I just press OK. So now you can see on the right side that uh, the images are being loaded in. And this is our first image. Uh, probably you can already guess the subject. So let's wait until this finishes and then I show you the further steps. So now you can see that we have this big mess of images. So at the layers uh, option at the right hand side, we have to select all the layers. So the first one is selected here. So I go up, press down shift, click on this. And then I go to edit. And then I click auto blend layers. And then here I have to select stack images. So I just press OK. And then we have to wait. And it's done. So here's our image. Uh, probably you can see now that this is a piece of a screw. You can see the thread up here. And then you can see how dirty this screw is. It's kind of disgusting. But uh, then you can also see that the picture is full of artifacts. So here I see some blurred areas uh, the, at the top uh, as well as at the sides. But of course uh, we can crop the image to some extent uh, using the crop tool. And uh, we 
can try to make uh, more sense out of this uh, mess. So let's say something like this. So now it looks a little bit better at least, but uh, still it's not the best. But you can see that uh, we even captured the wall, uh, let's say slope of the thread, which is sticking out from the surface of the screw. And that's really nice. We can even see some crack here and of course a lot of dirt. I don't know what that is. And uh, the overall image is uh, quite okay. It's not so bad. Uh, this is just one of my first few images with this uh, technique. So I still have a lot of things to learn. But uh, we can see that, uh, yeah, the technique works. So then now after cropping, you can save your image as a JPEG picture and upload it to your uh, Instagram or whatever. But uh, you could see that it's basically three, four steps to make this kind of blended uh, and aligned image out of your 50, 100 or 20 uh, stack uh, images. So yeah, basically this was the wall procedure. You could see that it was not very uh, difficult, just a few steps and uh, you could get this kind of image out of your uh, images in your stack. So yeah, this is how it's done. So if you want to buy my uh, PCB, head over to my project page on PCBWay. A link is in the description and also on my website in my uh, article. And uh, yeah, you can buy that uh, PCB. If you want to get the 3D files, again, link is in the description. I uploaded the 3D files in a zip file on my website. So you can get it from there and print it yourself. Or once again, you can get it printed by uh, PCBWay. And I up uploaded my source code to my Patreon website. So if you support me on Patreon, uh, throw a few bucks at me, you can uh, get the source code. I put a lot of work into it. It's more than 1,500 lines of coding. So it's a lot of work and I will not give it out for free. But for those uh, who support me, they can get it together with my other source code. So yeah, that was everything together with the bagging at the end. So I hope you like this video. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.